Good afternoon, Britannia, and hello to the rest of the world. Welcome to 2C TV. It's the 12th of March, and we are only a few subscribers away to reach 420,000. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, we're going to talk about the clash, the latest clash between GB News and Tommy Robinson. Uh, we actually have, it's not really just about the thumbnail that you've already seen, uh, Benjamin Butterworth, but also we have a list of uh, other videos, other, uh, well, contributors because Benjamin Butterworth is a presenter now at GB News but also other contributors who've also over the last uh, a few weeks uh, decided to defame uh, Tommy Robinson and spread actual lies. Uh, in this video we're going to expose all of that. Let's get on with the show. All right so what is happening here? Uh, yesterday we uh, brought you the news that uh, Tommy Robinson actually succeeded in court uh, when the judge actually decided to say uh, him visiting Crystal Palace, which is hardly London really, <laughs> uh, with uh, his daughter and her friends uh, to celebrate her birthday, is not really uh, going against uh, the bail conditions and you know he can, he can go back, everything's fine. Uh, of course uh, the police are continuing to put pressure on the justice system to make sure that Tommy Robinson is banned from London because it's so dangerous. <laughs> uh, but now we also have, of course, uh, GB News. In this case, uh, the presenter, uh, Benjamin Butterworth, who started uh, at GB News as a guest, then he became a regular contributor, and now he has his own show, uh, who decided to... It's, it's really weird because all the lies that we've heard, especially recently about all of us, and in this case, Tom Robinson, is fascinating. Tom Robinson is not an angel. He's a good friend of mine. He's not an angel. There are so many things you could criticize him on. It's the same applies to, for example, when I was talking about Donald Trump over the last few years. The Democrats, they could easily point at so many mistakes that Trump has made, but they instead they just create absolute lies. I have so many flaws, you could focus on that. Tommy has flaws, you could focus on that. Instead, they're spreading actual lies. Watch this clip from uh, GB News and Benjamin Butterworth. The MP earlier on, mm. by everyone's definition, they are an example of the far right. But, I mean, you know, for example, Tommy Robinson, is he far right, for example? Um, you know, some of the things, some of the conservative um, um, peer, um, um, politicians on the right have said could have them prescribed as... Far right. I think intent matters in this because, you know, you're allowed to hold whatever conclusions you've come to politically. But if you are, for example, as Tommy Robinson has done, going outside a mosque or an area where Muslims congregate and defacing the Quran, well, then that is trying to inflame tensions. That is not constructive. Arguably, it's taking away some other people's free speech because they feel threatened. Well, OK, so many issues with this. First, we will focus on uh, the Quran allegation. The last part of that rant, if you say something mean or if you do something mean, apparently it takes away someone else's free speech. H how does that work? <laughs> so if someone says something mean about me, does that mean I don't have free speech anymore? It makes no sense. There's no logic behind that statement. Now, Tommy himself said twice today, alone GB News had people on lying about me and defaming me it's like it's a planned thing uh, here Benjamin Butterworth talks about uh, being sensible or something then makes out that I defaced the Quran in public complete fabrication WTF is wrong with them yeah that's never happened it's just complete fiction it makes no sense <laughs> of all the things I've done of all the things Douglas Murray has done of all the things Tommy Robinson has done you can't just come up with random scenarios that you might have had a dream about. If you're dreaming about us, maybe you have a crush on us. <laughs> but obviously, this, is, this is, didn't actually happen anyway. Now, we know already that a lot of people, especially when it comes to GB News, have a problem with Tom Robinson. Uh, Calvin um, um, uh, Robinson has actually come out to um, expose GB News and the management, saying that well, GB News has officially banned uh, individuals like Tommy Robinson, they don't want him to even be platformed uh, on the home of free speech, as they call themselves. Um, but it's not the first time, ladies and gentlemen. In case you've missed it over the last few weeks, we've had a number of uh, regular guests and pre um, presenters and contributors on GB News going around spreading actual lies. Again, feel free to criticize Tommy, feel free to criticize me or Douglas Murray. We, we have done so many things you could say, oh, that's wrong, that's, that's mean, that's controversial. You don't have to create, uh, again, fictional fantasy stories. It makes no sense. 
um, we, we again, the, the, luckily, luckily, we have actually recorded everything. We already have everything in archive. We were there. Two CTV was there to do a live report on uh, Remembrance Day on Saturday, a few months back in November. We already know what happened, but this is what uh, GB News people. Uh, this is how they saw the event. Clearly, they didn't actually watch the live stream, but they thought they heard about it. American Embassy. They're very and but. But instead, Tommy Robinson came, came down and threw stuff at the police. 92 arrests, that's quite a lot. A few weeks before that, in London, when there was a counter-march organised by Tommy Robinson and his thugs, they threw more petrol bomb and rubbish at the police than anyone else has ever done in any of the last 10 or 12 weeks of marches. They, you know, maybe 200 of them attended that march. More than 100 were arrested. In other words, more than 50% of the right-wing thugs were arrested for their... But if you are, for example, as Tommy Robinson has done, going outside a mosque or an area where Muslims congregate and defacing the Quran, well, then that is trying to inflame tensions. That is not constructive. Arguably, it's taking away some other people's free speech because they feel threatened. Mm. In the case... Are the regular suspects, uh, the English Defence League and others on the... Uh, that was quite a few years ago. Tommy Robinson and his cronies are still around, making themselves known. They've been part of protests recently as uh, as, as well. Where they go, I'm afraid trouble seems to uh, to follow. But this isn't about the uh, the just the far right. Or I, the last part was fascinating. Um, that was Lawton, the Tory MP, so-called Tory MP, who said uh, the EDL and that lot are still out causing chaos. When, when was the last time they even checked the news? These people. You literally had Tommy Robinson years ago leaving the EDL because it was infiltrated by a bunch of idiots, basically. Not, not all of them, but a lot of people who were just uh, slightly more violent and just more aggressive. And he said, I don't want to be associated with this. Uh, and they don't, lo- they don't exist. They no longer exist. The organization doesn't exist. <laughs> when was the last time they even actually organized the march? Check your facts before you say something. This, again, we have all been a victim of this, by the way. Over the last 10, 15, 20 years, until now, until the rise of new media, I'm pretty sure, a lot of you watching, I've also been uh, thinking certain things. And I myself, when I was younger and more naive, uh, you would hear certain things other than headlines in the news or newspaper front pages out of context. And a lot of people, for example, normal people who now watch this channel, used to assume that Tommy is, uh, is the villain or Douglas Murray is a villain or maybe me. But then you re- realize that was when the narrative was completely being controlled. You only heard out of context uh, updates uh, and you, you believe them. We all believe them at times when it comes to certain things. Uh, but now people can see the truth. People can, can actually realize, for example, most of the supporters of Donald Trump, supporters of Tom Robinson, supporters of Douglas Murray or myself or anybody else, they know. We have good things about us, that we have bad things about us. We know that there are flaws, there are strengths. And nobody is being blind faith loyalist. But we do want to fight back against false narrative. Don't just create lies. For example, defacing a book. Or what was it the guy said uh, on the Remembrance Day? Uh, saying that uh, we, we caused chaos and Tommy caused chaos and 100 people, over 100 people got arrested. What are you talking about? The, the, the record is there. Even the police can confirm. Even the Metropolitan Police can confirm you're talking nonsense. How many times do we have to go through the same thing over and over again? We're going to get your reaction, by the way, in a second. But just want to say another react, um, response from Tommy on this issue. The last few months alone, GB News has had people on accusing me of throwing things at the police. On our missus day. Yeah, that was weird. That never happened. Throwing petrol bombs around London. <laughs> And just today, Benjamin Butterworth said that I defaced the book. Also, outside the mosque. That's a very specific story. It makes you think, yeah, a lot of people would see it and assume it's true. Because if you create lies, and if you believe your own lies and you tell the story, then other people will be like, well, that's too detailed. That's, that's very detailed. It must be true. Anyway, he says, and other guests saying that Tommy Robinson and the EDL are still out causing trouble. WTF. It doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> Tom Robinson has talked about his past so many times and the mistakes he's made and everything else. And he said, we all grow up anyway. But they are still trying to use, for example, something controversial you might have posted on Facebook 20 years ago. And they still want to use it against you. They talk about free speech. 
GB News, yet they ban my name unless it's a negative lies about me. That is all interesting because they do talk about him. Uh, well, they don't, they've banned him from going on the channel, but they do talk about him. But it's always full on negative stories. Same applies to Talk TV, Sky News, Channel 4, and all the corporate backed medias. Let's not forget every single one of these channels are backed by corporate money um, and advertisers. So they're, 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 a lot of them are completely scared of actually doing objective journalism or truthful or controversial because they know that their advertisers will freak out. They know that their financial backers will freak out. When you're controlled by big money, this is what we have to deal with. Um, well, fortunately, I don't have to deal with all that nonsense. I'm still independent. I'm trying my best. I'm really trying my best not to sell out, <laughs> despite the temptations. <laughs> uh, but of course, that's why we are launching uh, our new uh, platform. Let's just do a quick plug in. Why not? Shameless, shameless. 2CTV Plus will be the actual home of uh, not just free speech, but the home of objective journalism. You will know the truth. I will give you the facts. I will then add my own biased opinion on certain things, but you will know where you stand with me. Honestly and transparency, they do matter. Of course, uh, within the next few weeks, we'll give you guys update on uh, the 2CTV Plus platform. Let's see what you guys are talking about. I can see the live chat is burning up. First things first, big shout out to Keith Lawton. Thank you so much, Mr. Lawton, for another super chat support. Well, when we launch 2CTV Plus, you won't have to even worry about the regular um, super chats. They can actually get access to much more um, with a smaller contribution. <laughs> GB News is effed, according to Sir Captain Chaos. Uh, Richie Blackmore says, when did Tommy Robinson ever deface the Quran? <laughs> Never. There is no evidence of that doing it. Um, I don't know. Maybe one day in private when he was drunk. I don't know, probably not. <laughs> but there is no evidence. Uh, GB News are finished already. And we have another comment saying, uh, sue DB News. <laughs> and uh, the vegan dragon. I didn't know dragons could be vegan, but that's good to know. Uh, what is that, a GB idiot, uh, going on about? GB News is full of woke line nutters. I'm, I'm glad that the word nutter is being spread around thanks to this channel. <laughs> nutters. <laughs> Dave Lewis says, that shows the demise of a GB News giving a lefty moppet a slot. It's not just a slot, it's an actual show, by the way. Uh, another super chat of this time from Marley XXX. Brilliant. And... Jay um, Millsley says, uh, I unsubscribed from GB News a while ago. It's the new Sky News. To be fair, GB News' current thing is to compete with Sky News. And which is fair enough. If that's what you want to focus on, that's what you want to focus on. Because there, there is definitely a gap in the market when it comes to the kind of mainstream media platform sort of thing. Uh, they want to become more slick. They want to, they have this new studio in Westminster, which is very professional, very clinical. Fair enough. Yeah, and, and at least we know where we stand. Some people will like it. A lot of people will not like it. And there's always a gap in the market for everything. Fair enough. But creating a perception that, you know, we are different, we are rogue, mm, it's not really true. It's not a good idea. Jack says, GB News. Ha, 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 ha. Propaganda channel. Uh, GB News. Absolute clowns. Be very careful. You take on Tommy. You take on all the real men in the UK and also women and everybody in between as well. <laughs> all the all the unicorn rainbows. And uh, Peter Field says, I have emailed GB News a fair few times, told them to get Tommy on as a guest interview. Well, they can't because they're banned. They, they banned him. They're not going to do that, of course, Peter. A uh, super chat from Peter Green saying, uh, do the lefty loons know the difference between facts and fiction? No, and I genuinely, because I know Benjamin Butterworth personally, obviously, as you guys know, um, th and he's he's a basically a, he's a Blairite liberal. Uh, and on the one hand, he wants all the progressive stuff to happen, but on the other hand, he wants to bomb countries and invade Iran, for example. <laughs> but having said that, the difference is in the liberal elite and the, the leftist leftists, the actual socialist and commies and all that, is that these days the liberal cosmopolitan liberals become delusional more than the leftists they they genuinely i can assure you if i if i see benjamin butterworth tonight he would believe his own story because they somehow think about it so much or they i don't know subconsciously in their sleep and he genuinely believes he would probably believe that i'm pretty sure i heard that tommy did uh, deface the book outside uh, the mosque they really believe their own lies 
That's the fascinating part. Whereas the left, the, far, the actual left wing, compared to the liberal side, they are, you know, there's not much difference anymore these days. The socialist side, they, they trick you because they know they're lying. But these guys, they're so delusional, they actually start to believe their own lies, which is a, a whole different type of issue, which, uh, again, uh, psychiatrists could actually deal with. <laughs> a super chat from Aaron Bacon. Uh, Batten and Walters uh, both supported Tommy and uh, uh, Tommy when Farage and Tice were campaigning against him. At the same time, Farage tried to outright destroy UKIP. Yeah, I mean, do you remember the days when UKIP was controversial? <laughs> um, yeah, and then even UKIP obviously went different way post Nigel. Then they also had a big row with Nigel, and Nigel had it was a very confusing situation. Nobody knows really where we stand with the alternative right wing movements anymore, and um, it's a little bit confusing. Because even Richard Tice and Reform UK tried to be accepted by the establishment, tried to be credible, and that's the thing. Simon Sharp says, "If FGB News Two CTV is all you need, a uh, truthful and unbiased." For the record, I have my own biases. You know, at least you know where you stand with me. Uh, but it's, it's just called opinion. The reason the word bias exists is because it's those who claim they're just telling you facts, but in fact they're giving you opinion. That's why people say it's bias. But if you're honest about this is my opinion or my view, it's not bias anymore. You, you already know whether you stand with them. Be honest with, pub with the public and you will be fine. They, they never learn. This is the thing. They, they, the media and the establishment never learn about this concept. Nicholas says, I can't watch GB News or talk TV. Can't stand the gaslighting. I, gaslighting is the go-to tactics by the corporate media, by the way. Stephen Saunders says, I will never watch GB News again after all that S fake news. The thing is, they, 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 they hit the peak quite early on by presenting themselves as a very kind of rogue and radical channel when they had um, individuals like Lawrence Fox, Calvin, Wooten, and right now, we still technically have Neil Oliver, but I don't think it's going to last that long. So they gave you all these names and all these radicals, you know, rightly or wrongly. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're good presenters, maybe they're bad presenters. But that was the package that people were given. But then slowly or surely, you can see the change. One by one, they get ousted, and one by one. Some of them, obviously, they left themselves. Some of them got cancelled, fair enough. But the current regime... And the faces you see on Talk TV, on GB News, on Sky News, there's not much difference. There are some, there's still some good people in there, but even they have to play the game. So what's the point? Join 2C TV instead. We're going to have beautiful studios very soon. And it's not going to be corporates. It's not going to be any sort of clinical nonsense. We're going to get drunk on live TV. <laughs> ah, that's what I do already anyway. Uh, Brenda says, uh, at first, the GB News had a lot of promise. Exactly. But it quickly became about plastic makeovers and f f falling in line with the very things that they that we hope they expect. It's not really surprising. Brenda is right, and the the reality is when they started to up, um, recruit politicians as presenters, and it started with a few where people were liking it, supporters. Oh yeah, I like this one. I like Jacob. I like that one. But then the more you employ establishment people the more you'll be under pressure to be more like establishment. That's the, that's the reality. Do you really think Jacob rees -Mogg, and he's also a good friend, Jacob rees -Mogg, do you think he's going to be seen publicly associated on a regular basis with Tommy on the same platform? It's, 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 not, going to be, it's not going to be a look, um, good look for him inside the Tory party. It's not really just about Jacob, I mean, all of them. That's the thing. When you become, when you bring the establishment, you become the establishment. Just like what we say about the culture. You import the third world, you become the third world. Don't be surprised. If you bring in certain mentalities, you will have to follow that mentality. It's not rocket science. I don't understand how long it will take for humanity to understand this basic concept. But we will keep repeating it. Uh, Erbstick says, a GB News is a, a portrait light that attracts uh, moths at night. <laughs> They think it is the moon, but it is just a fake. That was brilliant. I love it. Thank you so much, Earth Stick. Paul says, 2CTV is the best news channel that tells the truth. Uh, so, Maya, carry on with the good work. Regards, uh, Paul. I do love the spelling of my name there. <laughs> it is a very difficult name, in your defense. What else do we have? Oh, we have a, we have a troll. Proud Saxon says, uh, Maya, please get rid of Faris. Is he back again, that guy? Oh, my God. What's it doing? Hang on. 
So for those who don't know, we have regular trolls who are not funny, who are not even competent. They just spam the live chat. We believe in free speech, but we do not believe in spamming. Where is this guy? <laughs> Send in the Met. Oh, now he's gone quiet, right? He's gone quiet now. But I can't find him. Oh, there we go. I found him. What's this? Is that him? Stephen, uh, more like inbred here. Whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> Is that him? Can someone confirm? Because I, I can see a couple of other comments. Similar. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I'm just going to double check because he's not spamming anymore. But uh, if it happens again, we'll find out. I uh, wonder why I've been unsubscribed three days running. I know it's still happening, unfortunately. It, it only affects certain accounts, not all accounts. But those accounts that are affected, you get unsubscribed automatically, almost on a regular basis. So make sure to check. Well, we have we are working on it with YouTube, by the way, uh, just like the flag emoji uh, crisis that we had. Um, they are working on that as well to make sure that the accounts are fixed. Uh, so this Farosco is not quiet. So I think he doesn't want to get... <laughs> Um, deported. Oh, what's this? Maya is a Zionist shill. I wish I could do with some of that Jew money. <laughs> they keep accusing me of taking Jewish money. Well, I'm like, where is that money? Come on, give it to me. It, the funny thing about this is um, people find this channel at different times. And uh, this channel has been going on for years, for a few years now. Initially, it was Brexit, right? The fascinating part is conspiracy theories about me and this channel have changed on a regular basis. Hang on, we can also confirm we have now, look at the number, 419. I can officially confirm. Boom, 420. Oh, or as we say, 420. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the support. The theories have changed. When it was a Brexit channel, um, what was it? I was accused of uh, being a shill, for example, or getting funded by... Uh, I think it was like, the, again, back then it was like far-right Brexiteers. And then it became about uh, the Tofton Street, which is basically a, a, all the Westminster think tanks uh, who are, they say it's right-wing, but they're neoliberal, basically. They they believe in free market capitalism, but they also believe in open borders and all that nonsense. For a long time, people were accusing me of being part of that. And then I became a shield for the Tory party. Even the, back then, before that, I used to be a Tory. I know, we were all drunk at one point. Um, but now, suddenly, all these newbies who found this channel, are going around saying, this channel was created, and uh, from the beginning, the narrative was about uh, promoting uh, Israel and all this. I've only been just talking about Israel since uh, the Nazis invaded Israel on the 7th of October. Like, this channel's been going way before that. And then, like, somehow people are like, nah, 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 this is a Zionist channel. What do you mean Zionism? Zionism is essentially uh, Israeli nationalism. If, if you mean, I believe in nationalism for all countries, yes. I believe in nationalism for Portugal. Uh, by the way, we have some good news about Portugal, which we'll talk about later. I believe in nationalism for Australians, nationalism for Israelis, every country. So in that case, yeah, I'm a Zionist. Good luck with that. <laughs> Sue me, idiot. Uh, RTX, I mean, 420, blaze it. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, 420, guys. Robert says 420,000 minions. <laughs> Yes, guys. Oh, Faris is back. Is it, what's it saying? Free, free Palestine. They always offer Palestine for free. Always ask for money. Heart is the hardest to break. Not really. You just need a bit of a hammer. Um, don't know what he's talking about. Is it spamming yet? Is it? it seems fine. Let him talk. Let, let, him, let him do his stuff. It's fine. Everyone's welcome in the live chat. The more they watch it, the more ad revenue we get. <laughs> anyway. Um, Tessa says, Maya, is it any wonder why more and more people now follow Tommy now more than ever when people lie so much about, well, that, that's true. It's also about, again, the opportunities that new media and alternative social media account, um, websites like X are giving, because this is exactly why the establishment want to always crush people like Tom Robinson and many others. Because they know, it, as opposed to actual villains, that's my point, actual villains and hate preachers or whatever you want to call them. Because they know if people find out more about the truth about, you know, people like Douglas Murray and Tommy and many others, then they can make up their own mind and they can realize that, well, everyone's imperfect, but they're not the villains. Since Tommy's return on X over the last few months and he's been seen on TV more, well, like in terms of his 
the news stories, but we can actually easily debunk them when they create accusations. People, more people are realizing, well, maybe Tommy was uh, younger before and he did certain things and, you know, he's grown up. Or maybe he was, he was always like this, but we just didn't know about him. We always just heard from the BBC news that he's a villain. More people are now warming up to him saying, well, he's, he's all right. He's, he's, just, he's just a patriotic person who just wants to do his own things and he's, he's just working class. But that's what they do. They call you fascist. By that, they simply mean you're working class. They don't like that. They see you as uneducated if you come from certain places. This is the real class issue that we have in this country. Bunch of snobs. <laughs> uh, OMG, just catching up and heard the uh, GB accusations that uh, Tommy Robinson did. defaced the Quran, I know. <laughs> That's funny, it, it, it is a complete head job. A death sentence for Tommy Robinson. Uh, Paul says, have they got, have, have they just got Benjamin Butterball? Butterball? <laughs> on there just to make a complete turkey of himself i think that was the initial idea of having butterworth as he was the left wing punching bag but he's actually becoming again i'm just using the word objectively he's becoming credible from the mainstream media perspective he's got his own show now so they created a monster <laughs> benjamin butterball anyway he's all right <laughs> barry cullen says my this idiot butterworthless i do okay we're gonna play a game now Come up with your best nicknames with the word, with the name Butterworth, because we've got so many different jokes. And so we've got so far Butterball, Butterworthless, and a few others I've seen. Uh, start now in the live chat. Butterworthless doesn't even realize that Tommy has his own copy of the Quran, so why would he deface it? Uh, this guy uh, has always talked fake words. Yeah, Tommy is actually educated in Islam. He's actually, he, he's more educated when it comes to Quran and all this stuff than people like Butterworthless and many others. He's actually made a complete full lecture on the whole thing, on the book and the text and everything else. Um, obviously, as a kid, I was forced to do it as well because I was under the Islamic occupation. But I was like, Ugh, I don't want to do it. But we had to do it. So unfortunately, I know a lot about that ideology as well. Super chat from Angela Gardner. Thank you so much, Angela. And of course, BJ as well. Uh, I am looking forward to the party tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Forgot, forgot about this. In case you don't know, how dare you not know, by the way. We have less than a day now to book your tickets. Uh, tomorrow, 13th of March, we will be in Manchester. Uh, if you want to come and have a drink with me, uh, or just want to meet me, or if you want to shout in my face, or whatever you want to do, we will be there in Manchester. It will be in, in Central, near Piccadilly Station. Uh, get your tickets immediately. The link is in the description. We are celebrating 400,000, although I'm saying 400,000. We are already <laughs> close to another quarter, 420,000 subscribers. Anyway... Okay, we have already started the game. Okay, are you guys ready? We're going to start the game now because I asked you guys to come up with the best nicknames and... <laughs> nickname for Butterworth. Oh, is this bullying? I think it's a cyberbullying. No, it's fine. I'll get him a drink when I see him. Um, okay, that's too rude. Let's go. Let's see. <clears throat> Robert says, Butterface. How is that? That's, that's the softest one so far. Uh, butter woke. That's a good one. Butter woke is good. Obviously, William has already gone with butter balls. <laughs> uh, just the butter boy. Oh no. Uh, butter McButt face. That's a genius one. Um, actually, whoever wins, I'm going to pick a winner. I will give you a free 2CTV t shirt tomorrow in Manchester, but you have to turn up. Gary says, button mushroom. <laughs> What this this video is all turned into cyberbullying now. <coughs> if 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 Benjamin watching this, it's just a joke. Uh, it's lighthearted, and I'm not going to show the bad ones. They're very bad ones because we'll get demonetized. Also, I don't want to encourage bad behavior. Let's just go with the funny ones. <laughs> Brian Buttercup, <laughs> that's very soft. I love that. Um, who said butter butter buns? Oh yeah, Bond says butter buns. That's a good one as well. <laughs> what is happening here? Um. Okay, let's go. We have so many others as well. Butter Morgan up. Oh, no. I know that. Um, butter wins. <laughs> butter mouth. Yes. That's a good one as well. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, butter bollocks. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to get on subscribe now. Thank you. Thanks for that. Buttzilla. Jesse, you win. Buttzilla is so far winning. Butter Bellin. That, that's rude. <laughs> Butterfingers, that's all right. 
Yeah, Herman is also right. The live chat is going up too quickly. Uh, next over the next live stream, we're going to slow down the live chat because I can't even scroll back up and down. Young conservative, butter worked hard. Pretty good, pretty good. Who was the one I just saw, said he was winning? I, f I already forgot. They've got so many good nicknames. Butter boob. <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> but tard. Barry says, but tard. That's good. Too far. <laughs> okay, stop the cyberbullying now. Because uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to buy more drinks now to calm him down. Anyway, yeah, this has been fun. Absolutely fun. Um, to be fair, this is fine because uh, the other side, they always come up with nicknames and jokey names for me. Um, but it's just words. Words don't hurt. Free speech is not violence. Man up, people. Or woman up. Whatever you want to do. Something up. Uh, thank you again. 420,000 subscribers watching 2CTV on a regular basis. Actually, we are now having about half a million views a day, uh, which is very good. Thank you so much. And of course, as I said, don't forget. If you forget, I will never forgive you. Book your tickets tomorrow in Manchester, 13th of March, 7 p.m. Come and have a drink with me. And we'll come up with more funny nicknames for Benjamin Butterworth. I'm Maya 2C. And we are the media.